Hello and welcome to this Trade Radiators video. Hopefully you've seen one of our previous videos which showed you how to hang one of these lovely column radiators onto a plasterboard wall. If you haven't seen that video we'll leave a link in the description below. So now we thought it would be a great idea to very quickly show you and mock up the different ways that we can actually pipe up one of these radiators on a plasterboard wall. So the very first way we're going to show you if it was on what's called a drop down leg. A drop down leg is where you've only got a few radiators that are being fed from the floor above. So therefore you need to make sure that you have two parallel pipes that come down nice and straight, go into each end of the radiator to feed the lock shield and the TRV. In this case we're just going to use two lock shields for demonstration purposes and also most importantly of all we're going to install a drain off as well so if you need to do any work on the radiator in the future you can drain down that leg of the system. So I hope you enjoyed this first part of the video and let's go. So firstly let's say that our two drop down legs are coming just up here. Now usually what you do is you use a double clip like the one I've got here and uh, that would denote how far away the pipes are going to be from each other. The thing is, is you want to leave yourself enough room to be able to come up into your actual radiator valve. So the first thing we're going to quickly do is just mock up those radiator valves going into the radiator. Usually what you do with this part here is basically wrap some PTFE round on this thread and then pop that insert into the radiator. We're not going to do that now because we want to take these out afterwards and use them on some more instructional videos that will hopefully help you guys along in the future. So we'll pull out our protective bung on here and then we'll just wind this in like so. So now we've got both our valves on, what I next usually do is mark out where I want my clips to be. The good thing about this is that you can say I've got two pipes sticking down here, I know what those centres are already. If I use a spirit level to run my clips and mark them up, I know that my pipes will automatically be level as well. Remember that your first pipe coming down here on this side will be the one that goes straight in to this valve here. The other one is going to go further out and round underneath the radiator and then elbow out with a T for our drain off at the bottom. So what I'm going to do first is get my spirit level and get a nice line down here so I know exactly where I'm going to go. So let's do that now. Because I want to bring my first pipe down nearest to the left, down here and then up into this first valve, I've cut a small piece of pipe there, then I can push this back to the wall and then I'll know exactly when I lay this on here, where the centre of my double clip is going to be. So, therefore, I can lay this on here like so, just like that, and then I can see that I've got one hole to drill, and it's going to be about here, and then, easy as you like, swivel this back out of the way, we get our spirit level on here like so, make sure that our bubble is in the middle as always then i can make a small mark just about here and then rather than bringing a line all the way up that you'll see we'll make a little mark further up where we want to put our other clip so it looks a little bit like this so now we know exactly where we're going to drill our clips or what line we want to be on i'm just going to move this line up a little bit because in a minute i'm probably going to be soldering around there aren't i and i don't want any plastic clips near to where i'm soldering because obviously they'll melt so I'm just going to drill my pilot hole there and there, then I'm going to get my two plasterboard fittings in there and get those two clips on. So now I've drilled my pilot holes, I'm going to use these fittings here which are brilliant. You've seen those on our other video about how to hang a column radiator and see how good these are. Uh, we're just going to wang them in now. There's the other. All I need to do is just screw my clips on. So we now got our two clips down the wall like so. We know that we're going to run our other pipe around the bottom here and all we're going to need for that is a couple of clips. So what I'm going to do is I'll pop my spirit level under there like so and then I'm going to make sure my bubble's in the middle, make my two nicks and I'm going to put a clip just about here and a clip just about here. So I'll put one about here one about there. Yet again, a couple of pilot holes. And yet again, same procedure, just get these popped in. So now if we look back to where we started, we can see we've got one of our, we've got our first clip here, our double clip, our second double clip here, and then when we split down to a single pipe, we've got our two single clips here. Now we're pretty much ready to start measuring up our pipe and installing it. There are a couple of different ways that you can pipe up these radiators. Uh, a lot of people would like to use bends on them and things like that, but I've always been a stickler for having nice elbows, proper edges, nice 90 degree bends and things like that. So I'm not going to use a bender on this, but sometimes when you're working on certain types of systems or if the job fits with other ways that radiators have been installed in that house and say they've put sets on or something like that, 
then maybe you will want to use a pipe bender so it looks uniform with the rest of the system. But before we continue to do that, I just want to have a quick talk about how we measure up pipes. You need to remember that firstly, you have enough pipe going into any compression fitting so that the olive has enough pipe to bite round and make a watertight seal. That being said, you also have to make sure that there's enough pipe going into a solder fitting to make sure that any kind of solder that runs round will have enough pipe and enough fitting for it there to be touching each other to make sure that there's a watertight seal as well. So always bear that in mind when you're measuring up pipe work. It's really important to take the rubber inserts out of your drain off because when you're soldering up later on, this could get hot and melt. So pop that to one side and then pop it in once you've done your soldering and it's all cooled down. I always twist my drain off slightly away from the wall so if anyone's gonna get a hose on there, it's nice and easy for them to do so. I always remember something my old man always said, and that is, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. So make sure that when you are installing your pipe work, that you get everything level. If you need to cut a slither off the copper pipe to make it so it looks level or square, then it's best you do that now rather than soldering it up and the customer or whoever you're doing the work for or yourself forever looking at that pipe work and being annoyed. So there you go, I hope you'd agree that it's a very nice, neat way for you to pipe up one of these radiators, especially if you're using a drop down leg system. I hope you noticed while we we're making this video that we had a small piece of copper about four inches long that we used to install into one of the valves or into anything so we can get an accurate idea of where to cut our pipe. Um, it's really, really handy to do that and every plumber's got loads of little bits like that in their toolbox anyway. I hope you found today's video helpful and interesting. I hope it's given you a better idea of how to pipe up a radiator and, uh, and you know, to maybe tackle this job in the future. If you need any more help or any more information, visit the website at Trade Radiators and I'll see you soon. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.